welcome to episode 30 of Impacted, coming to you via the Total Nonstop Impact Network. Hello, I'm your host, Bison. Today, I'm joined by Simply Steve and the Joker. How are we doing, chaps? Good morning, Bison. We are under siege. Oh, we are. We are. How about you, Steve? You all right? Yep, we're under siege. We're taking over. Good lad. Good lad. I like to hear it. Now, at this point, can I just ask that you give us a, a quick thumbs up right now uh, to get that out of the way? Um, and if you're new to the show, hit that subscribe button and give that bell a little tickle. Get your little finger on there, giving it a little tickle to never miss a listen of the great content coming out each and every week from TNI US and, of course, the, T- uh, the TNI UK team. Um, of Simply Steve Bison and Joker, obviously. Um, and thank you for everyone joining us. Um, this, I believe, is going to be our very last recorded show, guys. Um, and we will be moving over to the live format every Wednesday. Uh, it's been We've done it a few times over the last couple of months. So I think it's, it's worked really, really well. Um, I think we've enjoyed being a part of that as well. Um, so I think it's been great. As, as far as I'm aware, we had like well over 100... Uh, about 125 people or something was was joined us during the the last week's live, which I think is absolutely superb. Um, you know, it's going to be good, boys, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's, uh, the response last week was absolutely incredible. I'm, I, I want to th- thank everybody for uh, tuning in again. Um, it was something really special um, that last week, so thank you. It was good. What about you, Steve? Looking forward to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, so last week was incredible. We had so many people turn up from the start. And even looking back um, a few days later, more people were watching it, um, you know, a second time on replay. So, yeah, it, it was, it's really, it's, it's a different experience doing it live as well. I think it's very humbling uh, to see the numbers that we're getting at the moment. Uh, I, I'm really, really excited about, you know, where maybe we can take the show uh, moving forward. Uh, I know that we, we, you know, we have got we've got more plans to do more little bits and pieces to sort of kind of get the T and I UK team out there. Um, but you know, we're excited about where we're going just as much as I think we all should be excited about where Impact's going at the moment. So uh, yeah, no, really good. Right, guys, let's kick this off. I think we should kick this off with a bit of uh, Joker's news. Um, what have you got for us this week, Joe? That, that we can have a little chat about. Okay, uh, we have, first of all, Jordan Grace has re-signed a multi-year deal with Impact Wrestling. Fantastic news, fantastic news. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, what are your initial thoughts on that, Joe? Well, I'm absolutely um, overjoyed. She's proven a lot of people wrong that they immediately assumed she was going to jump to, to WWE or elsewhere because of her uh, long-term prospects were already revealed in an interview a couple of months back. You know, I had no doubt she was going to resign with Impact Wrestling and um, she's shown nothing but loyalty to, to Impact Wrestling throughout her entire time there. So to her to suddenly put long-term prospects into just because my contract's up now is ridiculous. It's just people jumping the gun and wishful thinking again. It's just, just um, it's, it, it's great to see it um, pie face in, the, in their faces and say, no, this isn't going to happen. Yeah, two fingers. Yeah, have some of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, from my perspective, I'm extremely happy to see Jordan resign. Um, I think over, certainly over the last six to 12 months, she has really brought that character to life. Um, we've seen sort of kind of slight change in that sort of kind of like intense Jordan to a more, um, you know, especially with the introduction of Rachel. I think we're starting to see a bit more of a lighter side of, of Jordan as well, which I think is really good because we get to see a good all round thing from her. But She's definitely grown massively um, in, in terms of character and her presence. And, you know, and let's face it, you're, she's a former Knockouts champion. She's now the, um, you know, uh, tag Knockouts champ or part of the tag. We would talk about that a bit later. Um, but, you know, I think it's amazing to see her re-sign. Are you, are you the same on that, Steve? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like you say, um, I I mean, as, as Joe mentioned about the, everyone who was like saying about that they didn't think she was going to resign i was kind of a little in the middle like as time went on i was a bit like oh, i'm not sure she's going to resign um and then she did and i mean i'm really glad she did because i don't think any company she went to would have known how to use her an impact is using her to the best of her abilities 
Um, so I'm really glad she has stayed. And to be honest, you've seen a lot of wrestlers that have jumped ship. Um, and I mean, I don't know exactly how um, NXT are using Tyre, but a lot of wrestlers have jumped ship and they haven't been used to what impact we're using them. I mean, take a look at how AEW use an Ethan Page. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you look at look at um, Jordan and she's probably thought, well, yeah, the glass isn't always greener. So... Yeah, I'm. I'm really glad she has stayed. I think that. Uh, I think. I think the main key as well to it is that it's not just a 12 month extension. This is a, a multi year deal. So, mm. uh, she, you know, which you know, I mean, could only be two. You know, could, it might just be two years. But at the end of the day, it's a multi year deal. We know that we've got her for at least two years now. Um, and you know, and she is the type of of, of character and knockout you really can start to build your, your, uh, you know, rebuild that knockouts division around. Um, if you've got the likes of her, you know, like say Rachel Ellering now, Taylor Wilde, obviously Deanna Kimberly, etc. you know, um, and Sue Young. I mean, he can't, can't forget <laughs> Sue Young. Um, you know, you, I think, and Rosemary, of course, you know, we've, we've got one hell of a um, basis here, you know, as long as Rosemary resigns as well, which I assume she did, because I think, her contract was up around about the same time as Tyre. Um, so if Rosemary stayed and Tyre's gone, um, I- I'm assuming she- she's tied back into a contract. Yeah. Again, just, you know, it's just not been disclosed. And why why should it be? It doesn't have to be. She's still there. So, yeah. um, and of course they're building, you know, they're clearly building storylines around her at the moment as well. So that bodes well for the future. Um as I say, I, I still firmly believe we're going to see Habit back in the undead realm. So, you know, I, I'm looking forward to seeing where that goes. But yeah, fantastic news about Jordan. What else have we got then, boy? Uh, we've got um, we've, um, speculation on what's happening with Moose's contract. Um, you know, we've, we've, we've had uh, a tweet from Moose a couple of weeks ago saying that before my contract is over, I'm going to be world champion. And there's a lot of um, speculation that this means, oh, he's going to lose it. He's going to go... Um, personally, I, I think it's just it's just a work to create heat with everybody. You know, he, he's one of these guys that keeps everything kayfabe um, wherever he goes, and he's built himself up to look like a beast since he lost that match to Rich Swan. And he, and the, you can tell that that the chemistry between him and Don Callis, there's something definitely brewing there. People are saying, oh, he's going to go to WWE, he's going to go to AEW, he's not going to be the one beating Kenny Omega, although everyone's rooting for him to beat Kenny Omega now. Um, I, th- I think it's, it's just, um, like I said, I, th- I think it's all just, just um, Moose playing the crowd. Um, Moose is one of these guys, he's been with the company for at least four years. Um, he's one of the longest seven guys alongside Rosemary and Eddie Edwards. He, um, he, he, and he's got total faith in the company. He has done since he's come in. There's no, it's never been any animosity from him towards the company on how he's been booked, even though it's all been a slow build and a slow burn for him. He's just, he's been happy to take it and happy to prove that he is one of the best athletes on the roster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right there. I, I honestly believe if you, if you follow Moose on social media, especially, you know that basically he is in character 24 seven. His, his tweets are very kayfabe. Everything he does revolves around his character that he's building at that time. Uh, I mean, even the, the the fact that he's called wrestling god on there, kind of just. I mean, he's he's, you know, it's all kayfabe in his 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 character and everything that he builds. So for me, it's more of an indication that he probably is already resigned. But you know, um, I I just feel that they 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 really invested in Moose. Um, he's been a big part. You know, the way they keep taking him away and bringing him back is for me a way of creating that, you know, uh, big time feel for him. Because when he goes and he comes back, they make a massive deal about it, right? Yeah. So so that's that's all part of it. You know, um, you build him, you build him, you build him. Um, he sort of kind of disappears for a little bit. And then when he comes back, it's like, yes, Moose is back. It's a big thing, right? So um, I, I think it's exciting times in the, in the world of Moose. I think you're right. There's definitely something weird going on. Uh, but when we get into with Don Carlos, but when we get to uh, talk about some of the undersea stuff, I'm going to pass on a few thoughts of mine there. What about you, Steve? What do you think on Moose? Yeah, I mean, I agree. Like us, like we sort of said about Jordan Grace, about how I don't see Moose working very well in any other com- company. Um, 
you know, I don't know how if they'd know how to use him properly, whereas Impact, he fits really well. So like you say, I think he probably is already signed. But the line, I, w- I want, you know, I, I will will win the the title before my contract expires in June. It's like I feel like they've kind of he it's it's like a double edged sword now where you know June isn't that far away. So that's not much time for him to win the title. And if he doesn't win it by June, it, it's like Moose has failed again. Mm, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Um I I just think it was more of a, a jab at basically the, the people out there that are constantly saying or oh, Moose is going or whatever. Yeah, um, it, um, um, it s- since like Scott Demore, um, um, since, since this whole world title thing with Moose has been building up, you know, he, um, he started it off um, when EC3, EC3 was trying to control his narrative. He, he had this picture of him with the grand championship and said, said to Scott Demore, is this not a world title? Why, aren't you, why, why isn't this being classed as a world title? And then he got the TNA world title and he's been build, building it all up from there about he, he is going to be a champion because Scott DeMoore said, you were TNA champion, that's not a championship. So mm. it's like every time Moose is, uh, has proven he is a champion, um, Scott DeMoore's knocked it down. And it's just Moose constantly pl- playing on, um, on Scott DeMoore, the way he's working with Scott DeMoore and the, the way he's working with Impact Wrestling. It's, it's all um, just basically to create heat with the fans and it's working. It's like like... You said, Bison, when he goes away, everyone's crying that he's gone and they want him back. When, he, when he's there, everyone's, everyone's bitching that he's not de- doing this, that, <laughs> and the other. So um, he's just one of the, the perfect characters to stay in Impact Wrestling. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's a big guy. He's, you know, um, like you said, recently, there was a lot of people moaning that we didn't have enough big guys in, in, on the Impact roster. Well, let's, uh, let's take a look at that now. Um, you know, we've got some... Very big fellas on there. I mean, especially with the introduction there. We, we could probably get it like well. um, uh, boxing, where we have actually weight divisions now. Oh, it's it's just it's just insane. Uh, we really have got some definite sort of kind of lightweight, middleweight, and uh, heavyweight guys now. There's, there's no doubt about that. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I just I just you know I hope I'm right. I'm hope he's already signed. Uh, because I mean there, there's been a few little things even on the Impact show like you know several months ago where Don Callis sort of kind of picks up on him and and we got a seven year deal, haven't we? You know, <laughs> it, it, you know it, it, there was there was loads. Of this, to me, that's just sort of kind of like you know that's mocking, isn't it? it it's it's they, mm. there's, there's a deal in place, mate. That you know the long term plan is there. Um, you know, do I think he's going to win the title in June? By June? No, no, I don't. But, you know, who knows? You, you just don't know. Um, and that's the beauty of impact at the end of the day. Um, so what else have we got, Joe? Anything else? Um, the, the last one we've got is um, there's a lot of speculation on the um, status of Killer Kelly and whether she's going to be coming into impact wrestling soon. We've seen a lot, a lot of um, promo work from her and, and pictures and that on her social media showing her um, stuff in impact wrestling. And she, she's still singing the praises of it and advertising it every time it's coming on. And now that everything is starting to ease off in terms of travel restrictions and everything, I think it is most likely we will be seeing her in the future. And this is something I want your, your guys' thoughts on in the comments. So by all means, keep um, spamming us with your comments. And do you think Killer Kelly is coming? You... Yeah, what do you think, Steve? Do you think she's on her way? I mean, she's currently in Portugal, I believe. That's, that's where she's from. Um, and, and something that I read was that uh, they, I think Impact were keen to sign her before she uh, left at the last set of tapings, but uh, she had to go because she was getting a flight back to Portugal. And then, of course, you know, all things sort of kind of went a bit tits up again and she wasn't able to get back. So um, I think it's just a case of possibly they are waiting. I, you know, I hope so because, you know, Killer, Killer Kelly for me... Um, well, we all know I, I think she's absolutely incredible talent. Um, and and I, for one, would love to see her join them. I think she's a perfect knockout. You know, you look at her, you know, she's she's like a, a small Kurt Angle, you know. She's a female version of Kurt Angle, and she's just so good in everything that she does. Her presence, the way she comes out, she's got that sort of kind of MMA feel about her. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I really like her. I think she's, she's different. Yes. Um, to what we've got at the moment and she's very different to a lot of lot of uh talents out there and i think that's what we need what about you steve yeah i mean i think it's a case of um uh definitely when uh 
I think I believe I mean this story I've I've seen floating around ever since she debuted. Um they they just haven't been able to bring her back because of the COVID issues. You know, she's been stranded um in Portugal um for ever since you know she took that flight back um they, uh, whether she was signed back then or they were just talking to her but yeah they they have been trying to bring her back ever since then i believe but yeah it's just a case of when when she comes back now i believe yeah yeah so i think that's i mean th- there's been a few other little sort of kind of rumorsy things flying around joe but i think that's pretty much the three biggie things for this happened since thursday am i right yeah, uh, uh, those are the main ones. I do have some news on, news on Jazz as well. She she's going to be working with the women's division in the NWA now, now that she's she's officially finished with Impact Wrestling and is going on her retirement tour. So that that's her long term prospect sorted as well. So good luck to uh, to her, and once again, thank you, Jazz. Mm. Yeah, she, she's she's uh, a yeah. She's it, it's great to see her giving back. Um, you know, when it comes to people like that, there's always always room in the business for them, isn't there? Because you know, there's one thing you cannot, um, you know, you, you cannot beat in that experience. And if you've got someone like Jazz, you know, helping to work and build up your division, well, you know, fair play. I mean, I'm, I'm not a massive NWA guy, but I know that she was their uh, longest reigning um, women's champion. So, um, you know, good for her. Good luck, Jazz, and uh, good luck on your retirement tour. And, you know, I think, I think it's great. I think it's really good news. Okay. Um, so is that it, mate? Is that yeah, it? Yeah, that, that, that's that's all um, that's come through the void today. Um, okay. If, if anyone's got anything else, by all means, chip it into the comments. No worries, no worries. Yeah, we definitely like to see your comments, guys. Now, obviously, at the moment, we're not uh, we're not live at the minute. We're, this is a recording, but we still do love to see your comments. Um, I believe we will be joining you Wednesday evening. Uh, certainly, I will. Um, in the live chat for the premiere if uh if joe and steve join us that'd be fabulous uh and we we do love listening to what you guys have to say certainly as as it's being played you know it's it's nice to see what you think about some of our thoughts and where we're going with it um so uh i i know some of you don't agree with everything um but what's (laughs) interesting is when you listen to us you've you sort of kind of get that brain thinking and you come up with other scenarios as well because we've sort of been hopefully inspired your, your, your imagination. Mm. Um, but that's, that's really good to see. Now, now the main, obviously the main, the main stay of this particular, uh, this particular show today is we're going to talk about the matches that we've got at the moment um, leading into un, um, under siege on Saturday. Now, this is interesting because I think we've got five matches to talk about at the moment, boys. They're definitely uh, on the card. Uh, but we've also got this coming Thursday. We're going to talk about a couple of matches where we could see some, um, you know, implications uh, with regards to possibly where, where these go um, or a couple of other matches that we might end up with it under sea. So it's worth talking about that. And we'll get to that a little bit later. But let's, let's talk about, I mean, you know, I, I'm going with the 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 order that they've got it on the website at the moment. Um, normally they go sort of from the, the bottom of the card to the, to the top. Um, so in the moment, the very first match that we've got um, scheduled for under siege is the Brian Myers versus black Taurus from decay. Um, and I, I actually think that this is potentially because we spoke about this the other day and uh, we talked about the whole tarot cards thing and, and Rosemary obviously was, was you know interacting with him um he she you know Taurus come in and give him the headbutt from hell um which just like would have knocked any normal human being out uh but he went down he's down out for the count and uh, Rosemary popped the death card on top of him now uh interestingly enough uh, I, I mean I don't know too much about tarot cards or anything like this uh but uh, Alicia B Cakey um uh, on the from the US guys uh is into all of this sort of kind of stuff um and uh, she stated that the death card doesn't actually mean death or what it means is potentially like the end of an era or a rebirth mm-hmm. uh so ending of one thing and a rebirth of something else um so I don't know I I think there there, there is possibly some kind of meaning uh, to that card, and and is it potentially the rebirth of Brian Myers as a, a member of Decay? Um, I, I I just have this feeling that they are building Decay. They're, they're turning them into a bigger faction. Uh, I can see 
uh, Havoc joining, obviously, uh, but we'll get onto that in a second, um, as well as you know, uh, you know, other people. What are your thoughts on possibly Brian Myers uh, joining Decay, then, boys? Um, well, Brian Myers has taken a lot of inspiration from Abyss, and you know, you you look at um, his um, shirt and that he's got a, a um, not his shirt, his mask. That that he's that's a reference to Abyss and. Um, Decay's logo has got that tribute to Abyss on it as well, and the A. So there's always that um, no, throwback to the original monster that they had they had with them. And I think this is going to go somewhere like the, it, they tried to do with Bram. It's either um, they're going to they're going to try they're going to take Bram Myers hostage, and he's e- he's either going to break out or he is going to succumb to Decay. Either way, it's an interesting angle, especially with Brian Myers, because it was something that I didn't expect to happen. Um, we, we saw the, the bits of back and forth between them a couple of weeks ago, but that was just taunting and you know jabs and Brian Myers just playing them down. But I never expected it to come to something like this. And, I know. Um, what we did, the way we did, what they did with Bram, that was awesome. Um, it did, it could have ended a bit better, but in general, the whole the whole idea of it was really good. Now they're trying it again with someone who has um, got long, more long-term prospects with the company. It's just something that's really going to um, help. And it's just it's going to give the case some more momentum back as well because they've lost quite a lot of momentum since they've come in. That's what, yeah, yeah. See, I, I'm thinking very similar along your lines on where this is going to go. What do you think, Steve? I mean, I know that you, you know, you're a long-time fan of, of TNA and uh, so, you, you, you know, you'll remember the old, the old version. Uh, with a base, etc. So, I mean, what do you think on this? Are you seeing some sort of kind of, you know, I, I see similarities. Yeah, definitely. I'm thinking the same sort of lines. Um, and as much as I loved Bram, Myers has that little bit more personality to him. Um, and as much as I've loved the Myers character, um, and I think uh, first time I saw it, I was like, oh, I don't know if I like this because I love the Myers character so much. Putting him with Decay, he'll make anything work. So this could be um, this could be really, really good because he could make the Decay that little bit better than what it is, which the Decay is great already. <laughs> right. So um, that that begs that begs the question, boys. Is you know who's going to be who's going to be victorious in this Brian Myers Taurus? Uh, match at Under Siege, or how do you think it's going to go? Okay, I, I think um, I think we've we've all um, talked about this as well. I I think um, Brian Myers is going to like get himself disqualified, and then um, Black Taurus and Crazy Steve are gonna, I'm just going to pummel him to basically knock him out, and then he's going to be taken off to the Undead Realm. Um, or, or if Torres gets the win over Brian Myers, that's how it's going to play, and that's how Brian Myers is going to go get taken to the shadow. But um, if Brian Myers wins, then it, it, either way, it's going to end with Myers being um, captivated and taken off somewhere. So, but the match is going to be really good. It's it's um, a mismatch that you don't know how it's what, how it's going to play out and um, who's got the better advantage. Sure, so Torres has got the strength advantage. And this probably the speed advantage as well, but Myers is a really good technical wrestler, and na- na- and he-, he can get nasty if he wants to. And we've, exactly. seen, we've seen that with Cardona, what he did to Cardona's knee. Exactly, he he wasn't he wasn't shying away from that, was he? What do you think, Steve? Are you, you going to go with Myers or Taurus victory? What are we going to? Are we going to go with shenanigans? What are we looking at? <sighs> I was sort of thinking along the same lines, like, um, you know, we could have, uh, to be honest, originally I was going for Tor- Tor- Taurus to sort of win it. And then that's when um, my, you know, Myers would kind of just be sort of like carried off in into like the decay. But there's a second option that I think could happen, which is Steve gets involved and then it kind of becomes a handicap match. And then we get Cardona come out. And then that's when Myers kind of turns his new leaf and then he becomes kind of like what Cardona wanted. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Maybe, maybe. Um, you know, I, I just I just thought I 
fully believe he's going to be a decay. I fully, yeah, I, I do. But that's a, that. that's like a second option. I think you know maybe we're not expecting. It could happen. It could happen. And who knows? I mean, it, we could be completely wrong, guys. This yes. is just our thoughts um, on, on where this is going based on what we've seen so far. You know, have you got any thoughts yourselves? You know, leave us some comments down below. Let us know what you think. Uh, but uh, I honestly believe that we're going to see uh, a decay version of Brian Myers. Uh, yeah. Because again, like you said, he is he is a, a big fan of of uh, of, of Abyss. Um, so you know, I mean, he, even to the extent that he wears sort of kind of like uh, you know, his ring gear at one point was like all black with those silver jaggedy edges and all that kind of stuff. So he was he, he was basically a tribute to Abyss. And I, I, I you know, I I think we could be seeing that. And I think, like you said, I think he's got the skill set to make it work really well too. So yeah. I, I think I'm, go, I'm just I'm going to go with a DQ and I'm going to go with shenanigans. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to go for the, go, go for the same. Um, I'm I want to lean towards a winner, but it, it's um, too hard to pick one. So I'm going to I'm going to go for like crazy Steve miss miss Myers in the face or Rosemary miss him in the face, yes. and they get disqualified and then things things go nasty from there. Yeah. Well, I'll stick with Torres then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so the second match that we've got advertised on the card at the moment, which is which I think is going to be an absolute barn burner, is William Morrissey versus Willie Mack. Now, um, basically the Battle of the Willies. So I was say, um, are they fighting just because they got the same initials. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, this is an interesting one, but obviously we've not got too much story built into this. I don't know where we'll get some more. Um, this Thursday, but um, you know, really, all the story to this one is is obviously Morrissey sort of kind of, you know, absolutely destroyed Willie in that in the match a couple of weeks ago. I think he he actually got he actually pinned Willie Mac as well, didn't he? Yes. yes. So, so I think that's I think that's where this is sort of like come from. It, it's just one of those sort of kind of short term builds just get Morrissey in a, in a match with a good a re, you know with a good guy to see what he can do kind of thing um so yeah I, I fully expect William Morrissey to win this um because at the end of the day Willie he's got it doesn't matter if Willie loses you know he's he's lost plenty of times but he's still an amazing character and we still love him so I don't think it makes a lot of difference but I think this is all about building up William um to be the beast um so what are your thoughts on this one then steve um yeah like to be honest um it's pretty easy to um, pick a winner in this because morrissey's come in he's looked like an absolute beast and um yeah you can't cut cut the legs off him this quick you know if uh, it'll be a competitive match because mac always puts up a great great match and it's, it's similar to which swan really he always plays the underdog really well um but yeah, I don't think I don't see Mac coming out of this as a winner. Sadly, it's. I mean, it's. It's not going to be. You're right. It's not going to be a squash match because they're not going to want to squash Willie. Um, but but I think I think you're right. I think you know William Morrissey has to come out of this as victor. Otherwise, they've like literally just thrown away. Um, you know, getting him over. Um, mm. The fact is, the guy's over anyway. Um, I, I posted something on social media the other day with regards to like. Um, uh, the, the amount of views that, that his segment had um, <laughs> on, on on YouTube was ridiculous, um, and and I'm like, you know, don't tell me this guy's not a draw because if he wasn't, he wouldn't have had like three hundred thousand people watching his video, you know. So so I, I you know I think I think in the end of the day, um, you know, the guy is definitely a draw. I think it's great that we've got him here on Impact Wrestling. I think he's a perfect platform for him to to shine. Um, and, and you're right. I think this is definitely going to be a Morrissey win. Um, real shame because I am a Mac fan, but you know, I, I just think that you know it, it's the right thing to do at this moment. Uh, put him in with a really good guy that can go, um, so that they both, you know, so evil. I mean, at the end of the day, William will get to shine as well. You know, show what he can do. Um, so I, I think it's going to be great. So yeah, looking forward to this match actually a lot. Um, so then we move on and we've got the, the next advertised match is the tag title match, which is um, Fire and Flavor, obviously, is the now the challengers versus the champions, uh, Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering. And like I was saying earlier, 
Um, I think it's great, obviously, that Jordan's coming. She's got this new character that she's starting to build, um, which I think is something that Ellering had started, which is this uh, strong, was it called Smile Style or something? Yeah. Which I think is, which I think is really, <clears throat> which is really cool. Um, and so what we're starting to see is a slightly different version of Jordan Grace. It's more smiley version of Jordan Grace. It's more face version of Jordan Grace. Um, you know, and uh, I, I for one, hope that they retain. You know, I am a fan of Fire and Flavor. I think they're that they are fantastic. You know, but um, I think Jordan and Ellering uh, really elevate that title quite high because at the end of the day, you've got Rachel Ellering, who is a second generation, um, you know, star, absolutely, you know, really has got star, you know, written all over her. Um, and you've got Jordan Grace, former knockouts champion. Um, you know, you've got pedigree in there. And I think that elevates, if there are champions, that elevates the, the title. What do you think, Steve? Yeah, I mean, I'm with you. Like, I do see them retaining, um, especially now we've found out that Grace has re-signed. Um, it's more of a reason to keep the belts on the champions. Um, this Thursday is going to be interesting, I feel, because you had um, Ellering beat um, Kira Hogan, um, and then you've had Tasha challenge grace and saying grace isn't good enough as a, as a champion so it puts them in a bit of a sticky situation i feel because you know if tasha wins then you feel well she's she's correcting grace whereas if grace wins then if the champions win then they've done a whole three in three over fire and flavor which kind of makes fire and flavor look pretty weak. weak it does make them look weak the only thing is on this one is i would say they are I think Tash is going to win, uh, but it's going to be based on some kind of shenanigan where Kira pulls out when she's about to be pinned or something. And then mm. there's going to be something that the ref doesn't see. Um, they, because at the end of the day, fire and flavor are heels. Mm. So they use heel tactics all the time, whereas Grace and Ellering are face. Yeah. So... You know, I think there's going to be some sort of shenanigans. I think that, that uh, Tash is going to win. We'll get to that in a bit because we're talking about that match a little bit later. But, um, yeah, no, I, I think there is some implications from Thursday uh, as to where this is going to go. But I'm, I'm going to go with Grace Ellery and retain. What about yourself? Um, yeah, I, I have to agree. Um, Jordan Grace and, Ta- and Rachel Ellery are going, to, are going to win this match. It's going to be really competitive. Um, you know, fire and flavor have brought out the best in every knockout knockouts tag team they've gone up against. You know, they've proven that they're they're no joke. And jo- Jordan Grace, she's uh, an I am woman like Diana Prazo. She's uh, a very she was a very very competitive knockouts champion. And s- since the whole thing with Diana Prazo and J- Jazz getting involved with Jordan Grace, her charisma has sky- skyrocketed. Um, you know, like you said, her character has completely changed now. She's gone from a, a, a less intense um her hard faced characters to someone who's now a bit more relaxed and a bit more in her, in her comfort zone and um i think jordan grace is going to get the pin in this match as well r- rather than rachel Ellering get the pin so it's, it's that that's going to to anything that happens on thursday jordan grace is going to rectify that and prove say prove tasha Steele's wrong cause, and kira hogan wrong because they've been saying that oh you know rachel Ellering's the one who got the pin on us just so it doesn't matter what Jordan Grace does. So I think um, Jordan Grace is going to get the pin in this match. And it's going to be really competitive. And we're going to need to have uh, some in because we know Kira Hogan and Tasha Seals are going to be giving a load of gab. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be definitely running commentary. That's for sure. As they go through it. Now, I, I think this is definitely um, going to be a fantastic match. I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, you know, did, did you say who you thought was going to win, Steve? Um, yeah, I've gone for Grace and Ellowin. Yeah, I think I think it's, it's a unanimous one on that, um, and I'm really looking forward to the the Grace Ellering era. I think it's it's going to be it's going to be pretty good moving forward, especially if we get some more knockouts coming in like we think we have, and we get some more challengers. Um, I think it's going to be yeah, it's going to be it's going to be really good. Um, okay, so if we move on to the next match that we've got advertised, we've got the Good Brothers um, and Kenny uh, Kenny Omega versus. Eddie and Finn Juice, Eddie Edwards and Finn Juice. So um, this is going to be, I, 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 I'm not sure on this. I think it's going to be a really, really good match. Um, 
I hope we're going to see Kenny and Eddie face off. I think we're going to get a bit of gold. We've seen the, uh, we've seen the whole when they did something. They did this similarly before, didn't they? With the, mm. I think it was a machine guns and Rich and obviously Kenny, the good brothers and Kenny. Uh, and when we got to see those glimpses of Kenny and Rich, it was almost like, yeah, these two together one on one is going to be amazing. So. I think it's almost like that similar scenario whereby, because uh, I honestly believe we're going to get Eddie versus Kenny at some point. Yeah. Um, you know, if you didn't, that would be a ridiculous missed opportunity uh, because as we know, Eddie Edwards is an amazing in-ring performer and could put out, you know, five-star matches week in, week out with pretty much anybody. Um, you stick him in with, with a five-star uh, machine of like Kenny, then then, you know, you're going to get, 10 star matches um so it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see where that goes um uh, who do i think is going to win I, i'm going to go with kenny and the good brothers what what, what do you think steve um yeah um well personally i'm hoping we see kenny versus kenny 2.0 that'd be great <laughs> yeah yeah that'd be good. um but yeah i, I mean Part of me is really hoping that Edwards pins Omega, given what we could see later. Or, well, what we could see later on, because I'm hoping that the six way is the main event. Okay, so potentially, if if Eddie pinned Kenny, mm. then that would then lead to a possible opportunity for Eddie to face Kenny for the titles, wouldn't it? Yeah, so, and so then right. and then if a specific person wins the six way, that could lead to something pretty. Yeah, it could actually. You're right. Yeah, that could lead to something interesting. We could end up with Eddie Sammy versus Eddie. Yeah, I know. I I could see where you're going there. That would be yeah, that would be crazy. Um, but yeah. So okay, what about your thoughts on this one, Joe? Uh, this uh, I'm looking forward to this match. Um. I want, I want Eddie Edwards and, and Finn Juice to win. Um, I, I think Ken, uh, Ken, Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers winning every time that they're in a match, it, it's um, too predictable. And it's the most, like, the most likely outcome. But I'm still going to be going for, Kenny, for um, Eddie Edwards and Finn Juice on this one. Just because I'm such a big fan of Eddie Edwards. Um, I think I, I, I agree with Steve. I think Eddie Edwards is, is going to get the pin on Omega and, the, and Finn Juice is going to distract the Good Brothers outside the ring. And it'll lead to the V-Trigger versus the Boston Knee Party, Die Hard Fusion versus the One Winged Angel, and Kenny versus Kenny. Yeah. Ed, Eddie Edwards even saw a message I put out. I, I want to see Kenny versus Kenny. <laughs> Eddie Edwards is all for it. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone on the Impact roster is all for anybody facing Kenny at this moment in time. Uh, I, I think you're right. I, yeah, there, there is a potential here uh, for this one to create some intrigue especially if if kenny gets pinned um you know it's not for his title so so in reality if he gets pinned it doesn't really matter um but like you say a bit of shenanigans here and there uh kenny sort of kind of you know ends up with a couple of finishers and boom eddie gets the gets the pin um yeah could be could happen but i i just I don't know. I just got this feeling that we're going to go good brothers and Kenny on this one. But like I said, I like your thinking. I do a lot. Um, so we then moved on to the, the final one that we've got advertised at the moment, which is the six way number one contender match. Sammy Moose, Trey Cardona, Bay and Saban. We've got some incredible talent in the ring. Mm. Um, it's a difficult one to call this because the obvious would be Moose, but Moose to then lead into a match with Kenny. Um, but I think we're going to see Sammy Kenny before that. So um, I, I honestly believe the way that they've been sort of kind of building Sammy over the last few weeks, Sammy's been very sort of kind of, you know, I'm the face of Impact Wrestling. I'm the, the hero you didn't know you needed or all that kind of stuff. You know, he's the dark knight and all that kind of stuff. So um, I, I honestly believe that, that we're going to see Sammy pin Trey or mm. Cardona. Um, a because I don't think Carno is specific, uh, Cardona is specifically signed to Impact, so it makes sense to pin the the, the guy that's not signed. Um, yeah. Or if he pins Trey, it potentially leads to continuation of the Sammy Trey feud later on. So uh, whereby 
Sammy ends up getting a world title shot or whatever. Maybe Trey gets involved, you know, because he's pissed that he got, you know, that Sammy pinned him. Or, you know, maybe if Sammy does end up winning that belt or back, it leads to Trey, a Trey and Sammy feud as well. You know, so I don't know. Or could it bring Sammy and Trey together? Like we talked about, any of my enemy of my enemy is my friend. Um, you know, there's lots of lots of ways that we can go with that. What what do you think on this one, Steve? Yeah, I agree with you. I'm leaning toward. I mean, obviously, you you heard me in the last one. I'm going with Callahan, but and I can definitely see him pinning Cardona because if you look at them, Cardona is the only one who isn't on the Impact roster. So having Cardona win the match doesn't really get you anywhere. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, Saban is the one you look at and think, well, he's probably not really. You know, he's probably the the weak, the the one who is probably lower on the card, but. Saban, Saban performed flawlessly in that match with Rhino, so I, you know, he deserves to be in the match. And I've got a few inklings with Saban going forward. So yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued to watch Saban going forward. Well, he is a former world champion, brother. Um, you know, he's yeah. definitely got the pedigree. Um, yeah, you, you forget, you forget that he's had two busted knees. Exactly. He does. He doesn't look that way, does he? No. He doesn't. He doesn't perform that way. Yeah. I think he just did the right thing. You know, he, he he's like, you know, I need to make sure that I'm fully healed before I ever get back in that ring. Yeah. And he waited and he waited. And he waited. It's been, and, you know, he, he gave it years uh, before before he felt that he was ready to go. Mm. What do you think, Joe? What are your thoughts on this match? Yeah, I, I agree. Agree with the two of you. I think Sammy Callahan's going to win, win this match and. Um, I have to agree, Chris Saban's performance last week was absolutely amazing. Um, and I, d- I didn't even know he busted both of his knees. Um, but that's just how, how la- lacking my knowledge is of, of, the, of TNA, unfortunately. But um, Chris Saban was absolutely amazing. I think uh, him and Moose are going to end up, end up taking each other out or really, really taking each other to the limit, which is going to give Sammy Callahan the opportunity to either pin Cardona or, or um, pin Trey. Um, Chris Bay is not going to get get pinned. Chris Bay is still going to end up in the, in this title hunt for a while. And but I think Sammy Callahan's going to get the win. We're going to get Sammy Callahan versus Omega, and then Moose versus Omega Mega come anniversary. Yeah, I, that's the thing for me. I think it's just too early for Moose to to take the title back. I still believe it's going to be Moose that takes the title back. I believe it'd be a anniversary. I was hoping. It, we could even push this into Bang for Glory because it would make a lot of sense, you know. Yeah. Bang well, what's, for Glory. What's interesting is they haven't actually announced when this title shot will be for. Yeah. No, they haven't. No, they haven't. But potentially, you've got a set of tapings. You've got the against all odds, mm. which, which, you know, the Impact Plus special, which would would could you? I mean, Kenny versus Sammy for the headline in that that would draw a few people into the Impact Plus app, I think. Mm. Um, so I think you've got one hell of a thing going on there. Um, and of course, you know, at the end of the day, there's still those connections there with Sammy and Mox. So, you know, we, we just don't know where this is going to go. And there's so many different uh, potential options. What I do know is that Moose not winning this, as long as he doesn't get pinned, is not a loss. Um, you know, it just means that he didn't win. Um, so it doesn't make him look weak. So... Mm. That's why I think this is really good because you know you could put you could basically have anyone but Moose win, and as long as he doesn't get pinned, he doesn't look weak. So yeah. it, you know it, it, that's why this is such a great way of going about it. Um, but yeah, so that's what I think. I, I'm going to go with Sammy pinning Cardona or 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 Trey. But then you know there is a potential that it could be Saban based on the fact that you know Saban at the end of the day. Is there as a as a veteran now? He's 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 performing as a veteran. He's not performing as a potential champion. I don't think. We might, mm. like I said, we may see him go on and, and maybe win back uh, those tag mm. titles at some point. Maybe I I think going forward, Saban and Storm are going to be in the singles picture, given on what we saw Thursday. You know, yeah. Storm had a se- segment with Bay saying about sing like not 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 needing a partner and Saban. Saban came out wearing trunks for the first time since 2005 when he was doing singles competition. That's true. Yeah, that's true. I never even see this is why we've got simply Steve on the show, folks. Right. He picks up on these little things 
uh, that, that, that we don't all pick up on. And I, I don't, didn't even pick that up at all that he was wearing shorts. Um, but yeah, interesting. Very interesting. That's like a, like a foreshadowing, I guess, or, or some sort of, you know, some, you know, yeah, foreshadowing or, or uh, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, so interesting. Um, but either way, like I said, I'm not sure which is going to be the main event here. I mean, I'm assuming the number one contender match is, but then you would have thought that I guess a match with Kenny in it would be the, num- would, would be the, you know, the headliner. I don't know. Um, but I think it's, I think it should be the number one contender match. And I hope it is. Yeah, I, uh, do too. I, I think, hope so. But, um, um, go on. Um, uh, Omega shouldn't be the draw for impact wrestling. I think it should be the number one contender match. Yeah, you know. of course it, sh- it should be, it should be the, 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 the match, which is, you know, showing off our talent as opposed to... Uh, and, can, and can you imagine, like, the... Like, if, for example, Edwards or even one of the members of Finjuice pins Omega, can you imagine the extra kind of, well, what's going to happen now in the in the six-way later on? Exactly. Yeah, yeah there's definitely... It's definitely an exciting card so far. There's some some great stuff in there. Um we're, I think you know we're we're definitely going to see some some really really good uh, matches on what we've already got. Now that leads us into talking about tomorrow night. I'm going to say tomorrow night. That leads us into talking about tomorrow night on Impact, um, where we've got obviously matches that potentially could lead to other matches, or we've got you know potential um, implications as well, like we were talking about earlier. Now. Um, you know, the, the, the first match that, we, that we've got there is obviously we've got Carl Anderson versus David Finley. Now, of course, you know, this is obviously, you know, a one-on-one match. It, it's with regards to sort of kind of like the implication, I guess, is who's going to get a, a win over whatever team that they're facing it uh, at Under Siege. Um, is it going to be David Finley from Finjuice or is it going to be Carl Anderson, you know, from... Uh, the good brothers, you know, who, you know, they see this as sort of kind of like a, uh, you know, a psychological edge. Who's going to go in, you know, with a, with a victory from the go home show. Um, I, I'm going to go with uh, David Finley on this one. Um, as much as I think I'd like to see Carl Anderson win, because I love Carl Anderson as a single competitor. I think he's incredible in the ring. Uh, so good at storytelling, really good storyteller in that ring. Uh I don't know. What what are your thoughts on this one, Joe? I, I think um Carl and Carl Anderson's gonna win this match. Uh the the match that Dot Gallows had last week, you know, he absolutely dominated Juice Robinson in in that match. Um and I th- I think Don Callas is trying to get the good the good brothers fired up to really have Kenny Omega's match um b- back in the match at under siege. So Carl Anderson's gonna do pretty much the same thing, just can go out there and obliterate the competition and then it's going to like lead into another beat down Eddie Edwards and Juice Robinson coming out trying to try and help and hopefully this time Eddie Edwards and, and Finn Juice holding the ring rather than get, getting knocked out in, like before yeah yeah what about you Steve what do you think I'm going to go with um Carl Anderson on this one um I think you're going to have Gallows and Anderson win on the the sort of the build-up to um under siege Hence, why I think Finn Juice and Edwards will win at Under Siege. Yeah, I, I I think you've got a fair point there, and I think you might be right. Um, yeah, so the implication there would be whoever wins that match gets that advantage going into Under Siege. Um, psychological, um, but yeah, so that's got that. I think it's it's got the makings of a good match. I mean, both guys mm. are incredible wrestlers, so I'm looking mm. forward to actually watching that one. And I feel um, like a broken record saying how much I love Bin Juice. And they're not even impact talents, but uh, they I are really good. Enjoy them. They are good. I think their personalities work really, really well. I love their uh, ring attire. It's like a proper throwback to the 90s. Um, but I, yeah, I really enjoy watching them. I think they're both very, very talented guys. Um, we then move on and we've got the number one knockouts contenders match, which is Rosemary versus Havoc. Now, we were talking earlier. Uh, with regards to the the whole decay thing, um, I, I think that there's something big on the horizon for decay. I think they're gonna they're gonna make them into quite a quite a, a significant faction now for Impact Wrestling. Not well, not just the three. I think we're gonna end up with a five or six member decay. Like um, by design. Yeah, definitely. They're, they're building them up. 
So, um, and interestingly enough, uh, maybe Decay will end up being the face to the, the VBD uh, heel kind mm. of thing. I don't know, but it, it'd be interesting to see that. However, so th- that makes this particular match for me extremely difficult to predict because I firmly believe that Rosemary is going to bring Havoc back to the Undead Realm and, and Havoc will become part of Decay. Um, so uh, I think I'm going to go with Havoc because I think Rosemary is going to somehow make sure that Havoc wins this so that she's sort of kind of like pulling her into the hive kind of thing, pulling her into the, yeah. you know, and she's going to make it known that, that she's backing her kind of thing um, to, to get that number one contendership. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, what, mm. what are your thoughts, Steve? What do you think? I've, I'm still trying to play it in my mind. I'm not sure how, but I think there's a way that both knockouts get into the match, whether it's a case of they get in the ring and they're both just like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll play the time out or whether they're having the match and Deanna and Kimber get involved, cause, you know, cause some kind of DQ and Scott's like, you've cost yourself now. Both women are in the match. You know, some something happens where both Rosemary and Havoc end up in that knockout match. I like it. Yeah. What about you, Joe? Yeah, I, I was going to say that um, Havoc wins and then uh, um, Susan Kimberly come down and attack them because Diana Prasso is still going to be keeping a distance from everybody. But um, the prospect of um, Rosemary and Havoc getting put into the knockout title match is something I think would probably work better for Diana Prasso as well. And, and then it would, also, it would also help them build the bridge between Havoc and Rosemary and how the Havoc goes into decay. So it's all good long-term storytelling and just... But again, again, fantasy booking that could happen and could turn out in everyone's favor. But if 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 it's going to be a clear cut winner in this match, it's going to be Havoc. It's going to pin Rosemary, and then there'll, there'll be like a standoff between them, or Ro- when Rosemary will let Havoc go, and uh, another tease into, into um, let them have uh, Rosemary without, like saying, "I've I've got your back. You know, you, you're still here. You're still going to come with us." We're just not going to take you now. It's all, all like mind games that Rosemary does. And I watched both their promos last night after that um, Impact Wrestling on Twitter. And Havoc was just so intense and so pissed off about it. And Rosemary's just la- laughing throughout the, her, her entire segment and really, really te- teasing that they're destined to do this forever. Like, um, you know, and Rosemary, wa- I think Rosemary wants to get Sue Young back. So, and she needs Havoc to do that. So um, it, it's, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I, I do think that there's going to be shenanigans between Kimberly and Susan, and they might hopefully might end up getting have as punishment get Havoc and Rosemary in the match at, at Under Siege, which would be awesome because you know, we all know it's how Scott Dollar is with Jenna Prazo, and that's just some of the best some of the best stuff you can get backstage. I tell you what, you could imagine that. that um, yeah, I mean, just imagine if 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 you get that, and then all of a sudden um, at Under Siege. You know, I don't know. Maybe Susan and Kimberly come out to try and have uh, Diana's back or something, and and you know, Susan gets knocked out of the ring, but the opposite side, you know, the non-hard cam side, yeah, go, goes under the ring kind of scenario, and the next thing you know, Sue Young comes out from the back, and the music hits, and Sue Young appears. You know, I, I don't know, it, well, uh, like. Since um, Hav- Havoc and Rosemary were in in the, like, the interview segment with um, Diana, that's the first time you've seen genuine fear from Diana. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, who wouldn't be scared of the demon assassin for crying out loud? Uh, yeah. But you know, or Havoc. I mean, both of them are incredible talents uh, and they're very intimidating. So yeah, so I so are we thinking shenanigans then? Yeah, I, I'm going to go with Havoc, but I think after the match we're going to get some shenanigans. Okay, I'm down with that. I'm down with that. Um, so we then um, have got the six-way number one contender for the X Division uh, number one contendership. So uh, we've got Ace Austin versus AC Romero. It's interesting that AC Romero is turning up again in the in this X Division sort yeah. of kind of thing. Uh, we got Fantasmo. We got uh, TJP, and of course Petey Pump, Petey Williams. Um, you know, you've got some. Yeah, some pretty badass uh, performers in this match. This is going to mm. be an incredible, incredible match. Um, Fantasmo, obviously, 
I think everyone's thinking that Fantasma is going to win. You know what? I'm, I'm, I've got a funny feeling it's going to be ace. Um, but uh, who knows? Who knows? What are your thoughts on this one, guys? I know one, one thing I do know is going to be a great match. Yeah. Um, personally, I don't think we're going to have ace or TJP because you're just going to go back to the well again. Um, what we've been doing like last couple of months. Um, I think Rohit, you're going to be in, he's going to be involved with Jake. So that's three of them out. I can't see it being AC. Um, and then El Fantasmo, you know, he's just come in. I think it's a bit too early. And Petey, you've already got the story. Josh brought him in. They've got a relationship. And, you know, that'd be a, you know, it's kind of all set up for Petey. Put Petey in there. That'd be a great match. Mm, okay. Okay. Joe, what do you think? Yeah, I'm just um, seeing what, what, how it could play out with P.T. Williams now. You know, it'd be like Jazz and Jordan Grace, you know, a mentor versus student or, or something like that, someone with mutual respect for each other with Josh Alexander and P.T. Williams. That would be an awesome match. But I think Phantasma is going to win because it's such a headline grabbing match. You know, we've got the, a new big talent from New Japan Wrestling who is um, a two-time uh, uh, Super, Super J Cup winner coming in to face off against the walking weapon, Josh Alexander. And this, this could lead to a bit more back and forth between them as well. But if Pete Williams was to get the win in this match, that would be awesome. I, I think it would be because it would be Pete Williams or, or AC Romero are going to end up getting pinned in this match. So I'm, I'm hoping, I think Fantasma is going to win, but um, to pick on a go off of hope and everything, I do hope now that Pete Williams does, prove everybody wrong and <laughs> we get that dream match between P- P.T. Williams and Josh Alexander just for that um, feel good moment of 2020 continued after we had Jordan Grace and Jazz we, we, any, any feel good moment matches are always matches that I really enjoy and this could, that could be a really good one to, to break up the intensity of Under Siege because it's going to be a really intense match, um, night and for total yeah you could be right I actually like the idea of P.T. Williams winning um, I, I think um Pete Williams, a, a Canada versus Canada uh, yeah. kind of scenario would could be quite interesting. And it would be a good way to prolong um, a potential Phantasmo match. So, you know, maybe Phantasmo could be, you know, uh, could be a, a Samiversary match, you know, you know, and also you're not sort of kind of giving Phantasmo that opportunity straight off the bat. Again, you put him in the multi-man, as long as he doesn't get pinned, he doesn't look weak. You know, so, you know, it, it makes perfect sense um, mm-hmm. that someone other than Phantasmo wins. But at the same time, I, I agree. I can see Phantasmo winning. But, yeah, I, I, I like the, the potential of Petey Williams because, again, it's a way of sort of uh, putting in someone that Alexander was, you know, can, can, can beat, can um, sort of kind of add to the run, make it move you know, make that run move because then you need to find another number one contender, um, you know, to go on. So, you know, and again, I think Petey would really put Josh over as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. That, that, that's how I see uh, the end of Pete, um, of Pete Williams, Josh, Josh Alexander in general, is to, to put Josh Alexander over to make him re- look, he is awesome. It's just to cement that he is awesome because we've, we've seen how great he was in the t- with the tag division and he came in to be a singles competitor. And um, since he's my pick for superstar of the year already, and um, it's, only, it's only about four or five months in to, to the year, and Josh Alexander has just changed the landscape of, of Impact Wrestling for, eight, for the better. Yeah, definitely. I, 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 well, we all know I'm a big Josh fan. I've got some stuff coming, guys. I've got some stuff coming. It's on its way. It's been posted today. Um, so I'm going to do a lot and when we, cause we obviously we're going to go live. So when it arrives, I'll be doing a, a live <laughs> unboxing of, of the Josh Alexander stuff, um, Ooh. for you guys to check out see what I've got. Um, so there's some cool stuff there. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't know. I, I just hope they don't rush the Phantasmo thing because yeah. I just and the, feel... the trouble with going, if they do go with Phantasmo is it will be his sec. It, it'll be, well, you assume that. And if he got if he got the win, he'd face Josh in like his third match. So he'd either have to lose his third match, or he'd beat Josh for the title. So Josh would have had a really short title run. 
Yeah, exactly. So I, I can't see it. I think we're going to see Fantasmo versus Josh Alexander at Slammiversary. To mm. me, that's a huge match and makes massive sense. Yeah. Um, uh, but and, and when you look at this match, like you say, we've already had uh, TJP and Ace. Um, so the only other option would be AC Romero. And I don't see that happening. But you're right, Petey Williams, that makes perfect sense to win that match. So let, I think we're all going to go with that, right? Yeah, I'm going to yeah. go, go with Petey Williams. I'm going to ch- ch- change my gut instinct with Phantasm. I'm going to go for Petey, Petey Williams. I like that idea. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that idea. What do you guys think in the chat? Let us know your thoughts. Remember, you know, this is, this is just our, our sort of kind of deductions, the way we feel, feel things are going. But we definitely want to hear what you guys think. Now, the other match we've got in there, obviously, is the Jordan Grace versus uh, Tasha Steeles. Now, this, again, is a difficult one because it's one of those, you know, who's going to go into under siege with the the, the final win um, under their belt? Who's going to go in with, the, um, you know, that, that sort of kind of advantage, as it were, psychologically? Um, I'm, like I said, I, I'm going to go with um, Jordan losing, getting pinned by Tasha based on shenanigans from the heels of Fire and Flavor. Um, and again, I think that opens it up to the possibility that, you know, they could retain, they could bring that title back um, as well. So I'm, I'm going to go with a Tasha Steels with a little bit of uh, shenanigans from Kira to make, to make that happen. Uh, what about you, Steve? Um, yeah, I really don't know on this one. Um, I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to go for Grace. Yeah, okay. And, yeah. What about you, Joe? Sort of caught me in the two two minds here. Just don't know. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I think um, Tasha Tasha Shields is going to get the win in this one, like you said, because um, we 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 know there's going to be some shenanigans, and mm. um, it's it's not going to be that Jordan Grace is going to lose because she looks weak. She's going to lose because she's mm. been distracted. So Rachel Allen is going to get knocked out by Kira Hogan outside the ring, and then Tasha Shields is going to get a roll up and pin her that way, rather than hitting with a finishing move and knock and make her look weak. You and think then, she's gonna? You think she's gonna hit the most devastating move in professional wrestling? I, I don't think she is. I think <laughs> I, I think she's 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 gonna the um, schoolboy pin up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think roll schoolboy up. roll up. Yeah, I think uh, she's. I think she, you know she, she's going to get a, 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 a cheap cheap victory, and she's going to s- steal the match. And again, like I said earlier, it's then going to build up and, and really cement that Jordan Grace is going to then pin Tasha Steeles during the match at Under Siege to prove to, to this slam home that she is not the weak link that everyone says she is. Yeah. It, it's like um, uh, George, George, Jordan Grace will be going into the match as the underdog. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, you're right. I, I, I totally get that. And I think, I think it would be, would be interesting. I, I, I yeah. I'm going to go with Natasha on that one. Uh, Steve is on the fence, I think. Although he's going, did you go with Grace or are you, are you? I went with Grace in the end, but yeah, it could go either way. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those. I think. I think you're right. It is one of those. I just think a bit of shenanigans at the end there. Jordan gets pinned. That puts a bit of doubt in her mind. Tasha and Kira go into the into this match with that psychological edge, um, and and uh, yeah. It'd be interesting, very, very interesting to see where that one goes. But I, I think, I think it's, I think it's a, it's an eighty twenty that it's going to go Tasha Steele's way. I think, in my mind. Um, so we've got the six man tag, uh, which is going to be obviously Sammy Bay Moose versus Saban Trey and, Cord- and Cardona. Um, so almost sort of kind of like the 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 heels versus the the faces, I guess. Um, now. What are your thoughts on this one? Because I, I have a funny feeling that we're going to see someone like Saban roll up, uh, roll up Bay or something, or maybe Trey pin Sammy. And like we were saying before, you know, we had I had this thing that I, I see I can see Sammy pinning Trey at Under Siege. What if in this match we get Trey pinning Sammy? Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's, it's, 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 it's going to be a, a highly competitive match, and. Um, Moose is going to end up clearing house at some point, probably even taking out everybody on his own team just to just to make a statement. Especially by the end of the match, I think I think Moose is going to end up getting the pinfall in this match and going with the the big momentum. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the idea of Sammy Callahan pinning Trey or Trey pinning Sammy is going to then add, add the cogs to Sammy Callahan winning it under siege a lot more, which is which is in, interesting. But I don't, I don't think someone like Chris Bay is going to end up get, losing this match. Um, but in fact, you know, his return to the ring 
it's already hit over a million views on YouTube. The, yeah, but the guy's incredible. Yeah, he? exactly. He, he was so humbled by it. He, he um, yeah. put, it out, put it out yesterday. You know, everyone is so glad to see Chris Bay back. So for him to get take the fall and need at least two matches, it just isn't going to happen. But um, I think um, Moose is going to end up pinning, probably probably pin Sabrin in this match. And then it's going to leave, leave the doors wide open for Sammy Callahan and Trey Miguel to tear each other apart. And Saban then, then like I said earlier, Saban taking Moose out or distracting Moose outside the ring, and so Sammy Callahan gets the winner under siege. It's, mm. it's all it's all brilliantly intertwined. I, I, I like I like these big um, go go home matches where they have the big the big contenders and all the main event, the, the big main event come together to really knock each other out before the before the night itself. It's always great great to just build that extra heat up and remind everyone who these guys are and what they can do. Yeah, no, I, I, I think you, I think you've not nailed on the head there. That's exactly what these big, these sort of kind of matches are about, isn't it? Uh, they definitely draw lots of intrigue, and and you know, I'm really excited about this go home show. I think, I think the the card that they put together is really, really intriguing, um, and the guys are so good. It's it's going to be, it's going to be a hell of a show this this Thursday. Um, I mean, what do you think on this one, Steve? I mean, are you, who are you thinking is going to win and get the pin? Yeah, I'm pretty much the same as um, Joe, you know, that I'm leaning towards Moose winning it and pinning Sabe. And although, again, half leaning towards Cardona taking the pin again, the only reason there is you wonder if he'll be 100% with his knee. You know, does that give him an out for taking the pin? Yeah. Yeah, I, I I can see that see that too. But you know, I'm just because um, Moose has dominated all the TNA legends in the past, and mm. Saban's another TNA legend. It's, it's, it just looks looks good on on Moose's Moose's card to pin the biggest name in the match, outside of him and Sammy Callahan. Yeah, you could be right. I mean, Saban at the end of the day is is, is a TNA legend, so um, you know, yeah, it could be the. Uh, yeah. Sort of kind of like the icing on the cake that Moose now pins another TNA legend, and he moves That's forward. Cool. He moves forward with that as well. In in mind that he's beaten basically everyone that TNA has had to offer, kind of thing. Um, I, I I think you know I think you could be right where we go. Maybe it is Moose that take that, that you know gets the win in this one, um, but he doesn't get the win in the in the in the main one, um, and doesn't take a pin. So he doesn't again. So he doesn't look weak. Um, moving forward, he was just yeah. unlucky. He was he was just unlucky that he's in with six other men, you know. Yeah, and you're it's onto a... something there, Joe, because he beat Storm, didn't he, to qualify? So yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and he's he's beaten Storm in the past as well, and he's yeah. be, beaten Rhino and and mm. Ken Shamrock. So there's a lot of guys he's beaten from from TNA's past, and again, it just add, adds this 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 guy is a star. This this guy is someone that you must be paying attention to. Mm. It's adding, yeah, like you say, it's adding credibility to Moose. Um, again, moving forward and where 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 he's going to be. But like I said, I still don't see it happening until Slammiversary. So yeah. um, it's one thing that's crossed my mind. Would I mean? Uh, would Would you rather see it happen, like say Moose or one of another wrestler take the title from Kenny at one of our shows or? invade an AEW pay-per-view and take it from one of their shows from what I can gather now I don't I don't know how true this is um, but I've, I've heard that the impact title can only be defended on impact TV okay or on, on an, at an impact show uh, sanctioned okay. show and same with the AEW yes so that's yeah. what I've heard but that sort <clears throat> of kind of unless they ran a joint um from uh, you know a joint pay per view where they're both sanctioned in the show mm. and they're both involved, then you could run uh, winner takes all, couldn't you? Yeah, if 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 they were to like bring um, the winner from the under siege into all out or, or the next um, AEW pay per view coming up, you know, and then they could they could they could do it there. But um, at the moment, it's the Impact Champion defends the Impact title on, on Impact Wrestling and the AEW Champion pe- defends it on AEW. That was the contract that Rich Swan and Kenny Omega signed when the match was set up. So it's also one of the reasons why Don Cass was ag- agreed to go ahead with it as well, because he wouldn't have l- um, let it go otherwise. Yeah, no. It, I mean, it makes perfect sense that they run it that way. Um, yeah. 
But like I said, I, I still believe that there is something in the works that we're going to end up with some sort of kind of um, joint promotional super show. So I still think, you know, because if you could imagine, if they did end up bringing in a fourth, because there's still rumours that now going around that there is a possible that this the next one is going to be Ring of Honor. I so, hope so. I yeah. really well, there, there were talks of Noah at some point, weren't there? Well, Noah, we already got a relationship with Noah. We've already got a relationship with AAA. So mm. I'm sort of kind of like thinking what they're talking about is a third promotion in the in America yeah, as okay. opposed to a third promotion in general. So mm. if you think about it, you, you, what are your options? You've got, because we've already got, obviously, Impact AEW. Um, the only other option on top of that would be, well, and obviously New Japan, but again, that's Japan. That's outside of America. So to add a third, it's either MLW in reality or Ring of Honor. Mm. Well, for me, MLW is not in the same league as Ring of Honor, Impact, or AEW. No. So um, for me, if it's going to be a big third, it has to be Ring of Honor. Yeah. Yeah, this is where EC3 is. And um, Jared... Um... Uh, Briscoe's there as well. You know, there's two, two big names there right off the bat that Impact Wrestling could use. Yeah, Jay Lethal. Yeah. You yeah. got the foundation there, haven't we? we? You know, Jordan Grace's husband, Jonathan Grisham, is there. Um, there is there is there's a lot of big names. Um, and a lot of them recently re-signed with uh, with Ring of Honor as well. Um, I'm not sure, you know, multi-years or, or what they've done, but they they've definitely re-signed with the with the company. Um, so you know, yeah. I th- for me, it makes it makes a lot of sense. Um, so, could you imagine them running a domestic show that involved AEW, Impact Wrestling, and Ring of Honor? That'd be awesome, right? That would draw. That would be well. That would be like you know thirty thousand. It sounds good on paper, but I should imagine the organising would be a bit <laughs> be a bit of a nightmare. I mean, well, who it, knows? It, would, it would be like when um, all all in started. You know, b- before mm. before um, AEW was even a thing, where Cody and the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega got together, mm. and put all in together, and they were just had, had anyone from anywhere who was willing to come in, jump yeah. jump on board. You know, Chris Chris Jericho did it with the Jericho Cruise when it first came about. Anyone yeah. who's willing, willing to come on board, just come on in, and we'll, we'll just tear the house down. And I, I think it was all to prove that you don't have to be the WWE to draw a decent crowd. Exactly. You know, they were saying we could get 10,000 people in, a, in, in, an, in an arena. Um, definitely. We could draw that. And they mm. did. You know, they proved that they could do it. You don't have to be the WWE to draw 10,000 plus crowds. Yeah. Um, you need, they need to make sure that they kind of balance the, like, the, um, the work, like the, the organization of things like we've seen it on impact for example like there was a backstage segment with um omega talk you know talking to the good brothers and the entire time the AEW title was in shot and we didn't even see the impact title and this this was on an impact show you know so you, you they need to make sure that the the organization of each show is on an equal level because yeah. otherwise you're going to have quarrels, quarrels yeah. with each other. But I think the way that it's being booked at the moment is booking. They're booking it that way on purpose because they're trying to create uh, 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 almost a them and us thing going on as well. Like we've talked about in the past, the fact that they've started wearing tracksuits for Team Impact, Team AEW. You know, even New Japan are starting to wear it now. So you've got Team New Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've all got their own little identities. Um, and that creates that sort of kind of team environment. Um, so I don't know. I, you know, mm-hmm. I, I think that everyone involved in this whole process knows exactly where the long, the long game is. They know exactly what this storyline is going. They know exactly what they're doing um, and, and why they're doing it. And mm-hmm. that's, that is the key here is yeah. that, you know, it's not about the, the result under siege. Mm. It's not about oh, no. the result at, at Rebellion. It's not mm. about the. Re- it might not even be about the result at Slammiversary, but no. it's where everything is leading to. And eventually, you'll so you'll get to that point. And you'll go, ah, yeah, this was fucking where, worth it. This is where it was all going, and I'm fucking <laughs> well on board with this shit. You know, mm. so so you know, I think that's the key here 
is that we we have to we just have to believe that they know exactly what they're doing um, yeah. and, and where they're going with it. Um, and I and and like I said, we know that this has also been a long time in the working as well. Like you know, Don, uh, like when Kenny, for instance, I think pretty much like when Jericho joined AEW, when when Kenny joined AEW, I think it's been in the works like for a long time. Yeah, the the, the young bucks. The young bucks had this had something like this plan since um, AEW came about. It was just getting Tony Khan to to come around to the idea because t- Tony Khan needed to stabilize the company as much as possible before they went on to do anything else. And when Don Callis got involved, it helped b- build everything up a bit more, and it helped stabilize everything a bit more. That that ended in terms of production, in terms of um, marketing and that backstage, you know, people, people aren't um, happy with how the product's going in general on television, but backstage, Don Callis, the Bucks, Cody, Omega, to- and Tony, they've all, they've all, they're all working together to, to um, cre- create a stable relationship there. And that's how they've got New Japan on board. It's how they've got AAA, AAA on board even more because AAA was a big spot with the Lucha Brothers and guys like that coming in anyway. Yeah, and, that, and now the relationship with Impact Wrestling, it's, it's just cemented it all together perfectly. You know, I just have this feeling that the, the relationships, all the relationships, there has got to be one common denominator in there. And I think as much as they're making it out to be the forbidden door of Tony Khan, I actually think it's Scott and Don. Oh, it is. They, they yeah. are, the, they are the, the glue, if you know what I mean, the cement that's sort of kind of instigating all of this, you know, getting everybody talking. Um, again, we know... That Don and Scott have been talking to New Japan for like several years. You know, this is not unknown knowledge. You know, this has been out there for a long time that they've been talking to these guys. They've been building those bridges. Um, they've been creating, you know, they've been saying this is not um, TNA of old. This is Anthem Impact. It's a completely different kettle of fish. These guys are serious. You know, um, they've got the money to back it up. Uh, you know, we're, we're looking to, we're in this for the long haul, we're in this for the long game, um, you know, and I think you're right, I think if, you, if they do this the right way, which I think they are everyone's a winner in this mm, yeah, everyone's a winner it's a case of um, in, to me it's just a case of how they do it you know, like you can, for me like, like, like Don Callis can cut a great heel promo and it's pure heel heat Whereas Tony Khan is like, get off my TV heat. Yeah. And some of that, it's some of that is what they bring. You know, you want heel heat on your TV. You don't want get off your TV heat. And I think they're walking that very fine line sometimes. You could be right. You could be right. I mean, what do you think, Joe, before we go today? Yeah, that, I have to agree. It's, it, um, Tony Khan, he's doing his best, and you can tell he's a, he's a huge fan of wrestling. He just needs to um, w- work on how, how he presents himself a bit more. But D- Don Callis and Scott Demore, they're the perfect face versus heel sides of, the, of this whole rivalry. And I said it when we went live. This is this isn't really Impact versus AEW. It's Impact and AEW versus Kenny Omega and Don Callis. Yeah, exactly. Mm. It's it's a very different scenario. Um, but I, all I know is that I'm intrigued uh, to see where where we lead with it all. Um, you know, I try and keep my mind as open as possible to, to where things are going. Um, you know, I, I have total confidence in Don and Scott. Um, that they know exactly what they're doing with, with Impact. Um, yeah. They're not, you know, they're not going to do anything silly. No. Um, so, okay. so yeah, I, I think they, they totally are are fully dedicated to Impact and where, oh, where they want it to go. I got watching so, AEW the other night, um, what was it, um, Jim Ross saying, oh, yeah, a, Kenny's got the AEW belt because that's where you want to be because that's where the money is. <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> really throwing. You're like, yeah, you don't need them little bites. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, but again, you know what you have to you have to remember is that they're 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 just throwing those little nuggets out there um, for 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 everyone to see, um, and it's all part and parcel of what they're trying to create, I think, between between these two companies on screen. But what mm. you see on screen is not necessarily what it's like behind the scenes. Yeah. So I think that's where a lot of people 
get a little bit um, above themselves because they see certain things happening. They listen to certain things that are said, you know, and let's face the facts, right? If Impact weren't happy with the promo that's been said or the words that are being used in that promo, they just wouldn't put it on the show. Like mm-hmm. they would edit it out, wouldn't they? You know, yeah. Yeah. so, so um, you, you have to, mm. I think you just have to have a little bit of faith. Um, I think the bigger, the bigger issue is AEW have not done a damn thing to make me try to watch AEW. That was the, that was what I hoped they would do. You know, I would hope the, 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 the joining companies would make me, you know, what one show watching one show would think, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just start to watch the second show. I and guess, I guess what you're talking about is that is the storytelling side of yeah, things. Yeah, the storytelling so, with yeah. one show would then draft over to the next show. I've now yeah. got to watch this show. But if you didn't it, watch it, that it, show, still, then you've you missed. You don't have to watch the next show. Yeah, yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, but you know, who knows where it could lead? Start leading that way eventually. It's yeah. just not yet. Um, we just have to be patient. I think we just have to be patient with it. What yeah. I do know. He's under siege this Saturday. He's going to be a cracking show. I, I definitely know that uh, because we've got some great, we've got some great matches. We've got some great potential matches. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, whoever Josh ends up facing, I think is going to be, is going to be a big match. Um, you know, and of course, you, you know, whatever happens with that knockouts title match as well, that's going to be, that's going to be special. So hmm. I'm looking forward to finding out how all this sort of kind of pans out tomorrow night on it, on, on impact. Um, and I hope you guys are excited for this as well. I think the go home show is going to be going to be really, it's going to be a cracking show. And then of course, Saturday we've got, we've got under siege live on impact plus, um, you know, don't forget to subscribe if you need to. I think it's also being shown on fight as well. So if you want to, if you're not keen on, if you don't want to watch it on impact plus and get over to fight and watch it on there instead, um, I don't know how you watch it on fight. I don't know whether it's part of your subscription or whether, because I know that Impact Plus is obviously not part of the subscription there now, or whether maybe there's a, a, a small fee attached to watching it, you know, as a one-off possibly. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's essentially a pay-per-view on fight. It really is. Right, so how much is it? Do you know? Um, no, I'm not entirely sure how much it is, but I, I know um, when I've, been, I've tried to watch it on fight once or twice and then, not been able to um it, it's yeah you, it, you, you get to see like the first 20 minutes or so and then it says if you want to continue watching pay this and, and you, some sort of subscribe to it and then, then then you'll um go for it from there okay so, so okay. It, it is essentially a pay-per-view on fight which one was but you story? get you get the beginning a little you get the beginning section of that to get into it for free yeah so, and, so you could pretty much guarantee then that the opening match is going to be the x division thing i would imagine yeah it is it, uh, so I, I saw the first tw- 20 minutes of the um x division match um for a club from a couple of from, from hug or justice i think it was and then and then it um cut off so i ended up having to, to um wait wait for and um wait for a couple of nights to, to find it somewhere else and watch it there unfortunately because I just um, could, couldn't get a subscription, subscription set up. But in, in general, if you want to watch it on Fight, it is um, a, a paid separately. Okay. But, but it's, it's still not like overly expensive. I know that much. So if you didn't want to sign up to Impact Plus, you can get access to Under Siege on Fight. So yeah, you know, whichever, whichever is best, whichever works out better for you guys, you know, that we always say, you know, go check out the Fight thing. Get on Impact Plus. We're all, you know, I love Impact Plus. It's, it's mm. like, I, I, you know, I refer to it all the time. Um, you know, like I said, I can cast it straight over to, to my 65. So, you know, in HD with no adverts, I, I can't ask for better. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with Impact Plus. And you could, like I said, you know, you it's available. This is a weekly show is like available like uh, 3 a.m. on a Friday morning. So you could watch it whenever you like. Um, and like I said, the uh, the monthly pay per views make that subscription worth it alone. Um, I think it's something like seven ninety nine if you're in the UK um, a month, which for me, like you know, like so that's a even if you were just to watch the even if you just to watch the plus specials, which are pay per view quality, that's a cheap pay per view. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so um, it, for me, it's worth it. Plus, obviously, all the other stuff you get as well. Yeah, and we get it cheaper here, I believe, in the UK, don't we? 
I think we do. Yeah, Ooh, I think we rubbing do. the salt in the wounds. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's um, is it, is it seven dollars ninety nine, and then I think for us it's something like four ninety five or something. Yeah, four something like 90. that. Yeah, I, I'd say I think that's how it translates. It's it's like you know about five quid. Um, so you know it's it's well worth it. It really really is well worth it. Um, I know it's had a few teething problems, guys, um, but you know they're really trying to get get this to be a really good platform. I know that eventually the idea is to put pay-per-views on there as well. Um, you know, but they've got to get, they've got to get it right. And that's what they're trying to do in the moment with regards to the monthly specials as well. So, you know, I still think you'll get your monthly special, but obviously every quarter we're going to get, you know, your, your rebellion, your slam anniversary, your hard to kill the bang for glory, mm-hmm. um, etc. So, which will be extra pay-per-views. I think they're going to get that on the Impact Plus app. And I think you're either going to pay a slightly higher premium monthly to get it included in your package, or you'll end up paying uh, separately for it on top of your normal package, you know, like you would a normal pay-per-view, yeah. like we've been doing on Fight, like we've been, do- you know, like they get- you do it on your cable channels in the US or whatever it is, where you ever you pay for your, for your pay-per-views over there. So there's lots of, there's lots of options in there. And, and, you know, all I know is that these we, these monthly things are must see. Um, there's some fantastic matches on there, um, and they, they really do build to it. And again, you know, it's builded on the on the weekly show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's all part and parcel, you know. So it all works out. If you don't watch them, what's the point of watching the weekly show? Like, <laughs> yeah, because that's what it's building to. Since they came back in September, um, the the impact specials have been absolutely through the charts you know, they, they've really put put the time and effort into making them pay-per-view quality um a lot, a lot more and you know and they've, and they've been building them up during the weeks leading up to it now a lot more which, which they did start to do when they first got got it all together but then it sort of drifted away and um got lost in the source to yeah go, a, a legend <laughs> no i mean they're treating them as a monthly pay-per-view that's what yeah, they're treating yeah. them. they're treating them like a monthly pay-per-view and then you also get these quarterly big shows really big shows yeah, you know I mean, and- I remember when they used to do the one night only and they just put them out as a that'll do and they they didn't mean any context or anything whereas now these 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 pay-per-views or these um extra sort of um impact plus shows it, they actually feel like pe- mid pay per views. Yeah, they do. They feel like a monthly pay per view, and yeah. and you know I love it. I'm I'm so excited about these shows. Um, so under siege, I think is going to be an absolute cracker. So you know, you guys make sure you you know sort out a way of watching it. It's going to be a great. It's going to be a great show, and I I'm really looking forward to this Thursday as well. Well, tomorrow night, I'm really looking forward to that mm-hmm. uh, because some of the implications that are coming out of that is is is. Yeah, it's wild. It's wild. That's what it is. <laughs> but I think I think that's probably about all we got time for today, boys. Um, you know, where can we find you on the socials, Joe? You can uh, follow me on Twitter at JOK Empty Space. You can uh, jump onto Facebook and look for hashtag Empty Space, hashtag The Void, or maybe even hashtag A Daily Giggle uh, if you want to step into the deranged mind of the enigma that is yours truly. <laughs> I, I could i could not advise you more to uh follow by uh follow joe he's a he's a great guy to follow on twitter and, uh, and the social networks what about yourself steve you can find me over at simply steve 311 um where i put everything impact wrestling related over on twitter there you go there you go so it's all good if you're interested in following me the bison uh i am at lord bison 45 on twitter pretty much where i do all of my wrestling discussions um now, I do want to make sure that you guys remember um, that uh, to follow the at We Talk Impact um, Twitter account as well. Uh, make sure that you head over, you subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're also available on the go. So if you look at it, uh, if it so if you like the audio, don't forget to, to, to find us on SoundCloud, Spotify, um, iTunes, iHeartRadio, uh, pretty much wherever you uh you know, you listen to your favorite podcast, you will find the Total Nonstop Impact uh, content. And remember, we put stuff out each and every single week. So when you do subscribe, make sure you give that bell a little tickle. Um, and that way you will never miss any of the great content coming out of the US or the UK um, every single week. Um, so 
much appreciate your guys. Again, can I just say, if, if, if you didn't join us at the beginning of the show, um, make sure that you hit that like button. If you do that right now, get it over to hit that like button. Uh, make sure that we uh, get up on as many timelines as possible, get as many people seeing us, our content as possible. Um, and of course, let all your friends know about us. Um, if you like us, I'm sure they will too. So anyway, well, that's all we've got time for, I think, uh, this week, guys. Uh, it has been episode 30. I forgot to mention that, actually. So episode 30, we've you now done pretty well. I think, we're, you know, we're going there. And next week, we're going to be going, we're starting live. So our, our review um of under siege will be a live review so make sure that you uh you join us for that it will be 6 p.m um in the uk which means it would be 12 p.m central uh 1 p.m eastern um i'm not sure all the other time zones i, I need to look into all of that uh, but there's three time zones not too bad um so uh yeah make sure you join us in the live in the live chat we do run a um you know a q and a session towards the end of of every live one so you know you you guys can get your questions in we do love talking about you don't forget to leave your comments down below Let's make sure, um, you know, because we are very interested in what you guys have to say. Remember, whatever we say is just three, our three opinions. You know, um, you know, we'd love to hear what yours are. You know, especially like, for instance, where Decay's going. Where are we going to go with this Decay thing? Who's the third company? Is it Ring of Honor? What do you guys think? Um, you know, where do you think we're going with the AAA and New Japan, um, you know, stuff? You know, where are we going to go with that? Is El Fantasmo going to be, you know, facing Joss Alexander at Slammiversary for, for instance. I don't know. There's loads and loads of things to talk about. Is Brian Myers the next abyss of decay? Who knows? It, you know, what are your thoughts on all of that? These are all things that we've talked about today. Um, we'd love to hear your opinions, so please leave us a comment below. Or um, if you're joining us, obviously, in the, uh, uh, you know, in the live chat for the premiere, uh, we're still interested to hear what you've got to say there too. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's, I think that's all we got time for today, guys. Um, really enjoyed, obviously, um, talking to you guys today. Um, you know, with that said, uh, I've been Bison. They have been Simply Steve and the Joker. And this has been episode 30 of Impacted. Take care, guys. Take, Take care. care.